Hi, my name is Matt Stolzfus, and today I want to talk about how we can enhance student learning, particularly by using uh, Mastering Chemistry in a flipped classroom. So if I look out at my class every day that I, I go to teach, I see a group of students that look like this. Okay, And when we instruct our students, as educators, we're faced with, with several challenges, a couple that I'd like to point out. Number one, what is the background of all the students that come into our class? And I see such a, a wide variation from the top student to the bottom student. Okay, Are our students coming to lecture prepared like we would like them to be? And then how can we improve the critical thinking skills of our students, having them apply what they've learned and, and synthesize new material? And how do we handle the variation in preparedness, ability, and motivation that we see in our students? I read a book uh, this past summer called How Learning Works. It's seven research-based principles for smart teaching, and it was led by Susan Ambrose, and it was absolutely fantastic. And one of the chapters talks about feedback and how feedback should be delivered to our students. Okay, number one, it should focus students on the key knowledge we want them to learn. Okay. Number two, it needs to be provided at a time and frequency when students will my, most likely use it. This means it needs to be provided to them when they're doing their homework. And what our data is showing is that most students are doing their homework around 11 o'clock p.m. So unless all of us as instructors are going to wait up at 11 to answer emails back and forth and hold office hours at 11 p.m., we probably need to come up with another method to give students the feedback. And then this feedback needs to be linked to additional practice opportunities for our students. And hopefully it will be tailored to their needs and where they are academically. So the question is, how do we personalize this learning for each of our students? And traditionally, this personalized learning comes from the textbook. And here's our wonderful author team of Chemistry, the, the Central Science uh, for the 13th edition. And we've developed a lot of strategies to help personalize learning, okay? When the first editions of the book came out, it was just simply the text and, and figures in the pages. But then modifications and improvements were made, uh, such as the Go Figure feature, which asked students questions pertaining to the figures, okay? The Give It Some Thought uh, component was added. So these are like little checks for students to kind of go along as they're going along in the text, okay? The, the thought balloons that you see for most figures, and now more recently in this edition, we've come up with something called design and experiment. So the question is, how do you take this traditional content that has been working well for our students and put it into a more interactive type of environment? We've also, in addition to our sample exercises where students can see what they're working on, we've added two practice exercises that are going to be now put into Mastering Chemistry so the students can go through um, and get feedback right away in real time when they're going through these questions in the textbook. But I want to use a, a particular problem here where we have a weak acid and we're t we titrate it with a, a strong base. So we're given a solution and we want to know what the resulting pH is. Okay, and if you know what you're doing, you can use uh, the pH equation. And for this particular problem, the pH would be 5.03. But the question is, how can we go around the 300 different students and try to diagnose what our students are thinking about when they're doing this particular que question? Because if I have a group of different students here, they all could be thinking in a different way. And if we really wanted to effectively diagnose what students are doing here, we would need to give them feedback right away that corresponds to the answer that they have. So they could have had a math mistake. They could have switched um, the, the log uh, and, and looked at the conjugate base versus the weak acid. They could calculate the pKa. But the question is, how do we give feedback right away to these students the way that they need it. And this is where Mastering Chemistry comes in because now that we have thousands and thousands of students using the Mastering platform, we can look at the wrong answer responses to a particular question such as this one, and we can give them the feedback that they need. 
This feedback doesn't simply tell them the right answer or how to get it, it tells them what they did wrong and then they can go back and recalculate their answer. So this platform gives Socratic based hints that allow us to get our students on the right track, maybe even before they came in to the lecture. So Mastering Chemistry is simply a computer graded homework system and what it does for our students is it can give both formative and summative assessment. The formative assessment is in terms of guided tutorials, there's activities, there's practice exercises. Um, in terms of summative ass assessment, there's test bank and all the end of chapter problems are, are available in this particular platform. In terms of what it does most for an instructor is it saves an incredible amount of time for grading and it also provides diagnostic feedback that we can use in a flipped classroom type environment. Okay, we're also working on designing a bunch of simulations that will give a student an apparatus like this, like they may see in lab, but also it'll show what's happening at the molecular level. So in a particular electrochemistry simulation, the students are seeing why the mass of the cathode and anode are changing rather than just observing it at a macroscopic level. We've also developed pause and predict videos where students will observe in a, 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 an experiment and then they'll be given a question of, in this case, how would the pH change when I went from hydrochloric acid to hydrofluoric acid, okay, or formic acid. So they'll have to make a prediction before they can continue on with the video, and then these can be then brought back in class and talked about. Another great addition to the mastering platform that we introduced in the fall is the Newton adaptive learning model. And not all students learn in the same way and some students have deficiencies. So when we give feedback in the mastering assignments, they can then take some of this feedback and give students follow-up assignments based on what their strengths and weaknesses are. So this is huge in terms of the post uh, assignment for a student to first complete a parent assignment and then go look at the Newton adaptive follow-up and you can you can assign a certain amount of question sets based on how many assignments you want each student to do they can also test out of these if they get um, and, and you can set the tolerance on that where if a student gets a 95 percent on the parent assignment they don't have to do the adaptive follow-up so how can all of this work into a flipped classroom? And when I first started flipping my class, I used these turning point uh, clickers. And they were kind of bulky, they worked for the purpose I needed, but I wanted to go a little something more. So then I started using a program called Poll Everywhere. And Poll Everywhere is perfect for polling. In this case, it asks, what's your favorite animal? Well, while that's great and it's awesome to get data from multiple choice questions, I kind of wanted to ask more chemistry related questions. And the program that I've landed on now is something called Learning Catalytics, which was just acquired by Pearson and is available for use uh, here in the spring if, if you'd like to demo this product. And this is absolutely fantastic. It was designed by Eric Mazur from Harvard and it really focuses on first the pedagogy and then the technology. So for example, in a large lecture hall, when I give a particular clicker question, it's hard to know if students are finished working or if they are, you know, just chit chatting about what was, was done last night or if they're still working on a problem. So in this particular case, I can go and I can talk to these two students down here and I can say, hey, I see that you guys have finished this question. One of you's right and one of you's wrong. And then I'll walk away and they're like, but wait, wait, I'm like, nope, go figure it out. Then I'll walk over here and talk to these students over here and say the same thing and then help remediate with these two students because I know both of them are wrong. And as time goes by and I hit refresh on my iPad, we can see in real time how students are answering and where they are in the particular lecture hall. So when I say, okay, everybody submit your answer, I can kind of see how students are performing. This is really, really great for interactiveness, but there's another feature that's 
absolutely fantastic that I've never seen in any other pr program. So from the dashboard, I can see that 53% of my students got this particular question correct. So what I then can do is click this button right here that says assign groups. And when I click on it, it will put students in groups based on how they responded. This is the reason that we have the seating chart here because what the seating chart is, is it's putting students together based on what their response is in the first round. And what Majeur has seen from his research is that in order for students to have an effective discussion on a particular question, they need to have some type of an investment in their answer. So if I would just put students in groups right off the bat, all they would do is just probably look at the smarter student because after a while in the semester, everyone knows who that is. Now they work on it individually first, then I deliver the assigned groups, and I can then compare how they did in the first round versus the second round. And in this case, we saw an increase in 53% to 96% correctness without me telling the right answer. So what I then can do in a case like this is that I'm not naive enough to think that everyone completely learned this, but what I can do is when I would give this question on an exam, I would predict that it would be somewhere between 53 and 96%, and hopefully it would be leaning towards the 96%. In addition, there's 19 other question types in learning catalytics that we can use. So if I am putting together a titration curve, rather than give students a multiple choice question of what that titration curve would look like, they can sketch it out on their mobile device. Okay, and then we can start asking questions like this curve up here on the top left. It kind of goes in and it sort of goes a, a little bit of a slope, right? As opposed to this one right here that kind of goes straight down and then curves off. Are these two the same curves? Are they different? And from a novice, they may think that this plot and this plot are exactly the same, but we can now discuss in class what the similarities and, and, and differences are and this leads to a much more fruitful discussion. Okay, So that's kind of what I do in class, but to get the students prepared for class, this is where mastering chemistry comes into play and it works very, very effectively. What I do is I assign tutorial problems from the regular mastering database. Here's a snapshot of one of my assignments from last fall, and you can see that they're doing uh, concentration uh, measurement or calculations here. Okay. Then in addition, I've put the sections of the textbook and I've included my flip class videos in there. So when a student clicks on a section title, they see the learning goal from that section and then they can click on either here concentrations of solutions or an example problem that I've worked out that corresponds to section 4.5 of the textbook. So they click on that link and a YouTube video pops up giving them just a regular traditional lecture of on in this case concentration of solution and this ties right back to um, the the textbook and I have all these videos available in, in a couple places I have a YouTube channel and then um, I have a, a website and an iTunes U course but what I found is I don't like to send my students to several different locations. So what I've done is I've now uploaded them into the mastering platform and I'd be more than willing to share that course with you if you would like to use those videos that I've put together um, in, in a flipped class environment. So I'd like to thank you guys for your time and, and, and watching this video. Um, you can get a hold of me and follow me on Twitter or send me an email down here. It's stoltzfus.5 at osu.edu if you have any further questions. Thanks.